the rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longed to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abram's sight. The rich man also died and was buried in hell where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abram far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you're in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered then, I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abram replied, They have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. No, Father Abram, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to the prophets and Moses, they will not be convinced if someone rises from the dead. Thanks be to God. Most of chapter 16 of the Gospel of Luke is about money. In fact, money is one of the biggest themes of the book. At the start of Luke, Jesus' mother Mary sings a song which includes the lines, He's brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He's filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. John the Baptist preaches very directly that those who have need to share with those who don't. In chapter 4, Jesus very simply states that God has sent him to bring good news to the poor. In the Sermon of the Mount, he says, Blessed are the poor and woe to the rich. Again and again and again it comes up. It's unavoidable. Across the Gospels, 1 in 10 verses refer to money. And in the Gospel of Luke, it's 1 in 7. David and his wee dog Casper are regulars here at St George's Strong Church of Scotland. On Sunday at the services and in the Wild Olive Cafe during the week too, he's one of the folk who makes use of our gifted soup and coffee scheme, where people can pay in advance for someone who can't afford it. Hi, my name's David, and I come from Mary Hill, who simply stands to wash my house food. Things that happened to him, we're going to detail about it. And now I'm homeless and walking the street and trying to find a house somewhere to stay, hope for the best. The God above helps me to get a, new, a house, nice house somewhere, be my be pal Casper. I like coming to the cafe because they help people out for people, homeless people, things like that. They give me food. I like coming to church on a Sunday. And my dog here, Casper, as well, he likes it as well. It's amazing to be able to sit down and have a chat with the guys who come in here for free soups and coffees. Um, it's really inspiring and wonderful to listen to their stories and their struggles and yeah, just be able to have a chat with them and, and, a, and a laugh. The guys who come in to make use of it really appreciate, you know, they appreciate the food but they appreciate coming in, you know, being treated like normal, you know, for a change coming in and being able to just sit with everyone else, be treated like everyone else, and it's really great the sort of relationships that build up with people that way. Uh, and I think it's helped a lot of people in more ways than just, you know, feeding them. 
One of the really good things that I've seen since being here has been the gifted scheme. So all the guys that come in every day and get their coffee and their soup. Especially on days like we had today where it was like really wet and miserable and we had guys coming in who were just like, we can just get out of the rain and away from the elements and have a nice like a warm and safe and like comfortable place to come and be. The whole scheme is just really a positive thing, I think. We, we meet a bunch of people that we wouldn't have otherwise and they seem to really appreciate the soup and coffee. So like whatever we can do to make things a little bit easier for them is just really positive in my, in my opinion. It always amazes me how invisible a poor man sitting on the city streets can be. So it felt right to have David and Casper front and centre. And I'm particularly fond of David's Paul Brune moustache. I was also keen to have Alastair Johnson, who's part of the congregation here, as my omniscient father Abraham. The question remained, who should be the rich man? I had someone in mind who would fit the bill as an archetypal businessman. At home, I was chatting through the idea with Amanda, my wife, and she said to me, is that not a bit obvious? Why don't you do a self-portrait for the rich man? And of course she was right. How, how can I deny that on a global and historical scale that I'm not rich? I, I could try and wriggle out of that thought and say, oh, I'm, I'm not rich, I'm just comfortable. It would be pretty cheap for me to point the finger at others and talk about them as the rich, when actually there's something more powerful in saying, this is us, this is us, the rich. So for me, there's a tension in this painting. In a city like Glasgow, the rich and the poor are always side by side. One is usually given prominence and the other hidden in plain sight. I flip that around to hint at Jesus' priorities in the kingdom of God. Jesus has a lot to say about money. Does it often get sidestepped because it makes someone like me, who is comfortable, uncomfortable? What next should I do?